Hi, I'm Adele, founder and CEO of Be Pampered. Today I'm going to walk you through how to do a lash lift and tint in 30 minutes using our unique formula. You can purchase our kit at shopbepampered.com where you can get certified and have access to all of our free training. Okay, so this is how I like to set up my tray for my lash lifts and tints. I like to have enough space on my table that I'm not cluttered. I like to have everything uh, out for easy access to make everything more efficient um, while I'm doing my service. So I like to get my cotton rounds. I have my bowl of water. This bowl is from Ikea. It was a great find. It's stainless steel. It's easy to clean. I've got my oil-free cleanser, my three lotions, my glue, my uh, PBD free tint, I've got my shields, my under eye pads, and then all the tools that I need to perform my service. I like to put all the tools that are gonna to be touching my client's skin on a tray with a Kleenex, just so that we're not getting any cross contamination. All of these are included in the starter kit. Um, so all you have to do is purchase the starter kit, you get the free training and you get um, a chance to become certified with us. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cleanse with our oil-free cleanser. So we wanna make sure that we get off any excess oils, any makeup, anything that's gonna act as a barrier between our lotions and the lash. So I'll get you to close your eyes. And before you get started, you wanna make sure that they're not wearing any contacts. Are you wearing your contacts? No. Okay. And you wanna just give them a nice gentle rub. If you're doing the lash service, you don't need to use your exfoliating brush just because it's gonna be a little bit too harsh on the eyelashes. So you just wanna use your cotton round and just make sure that you can get any excess makeup that's on there, any excess mascara. So as you can see, you can see that the makeup has been removed. I'm just gonna go over one more time with a clean cotton round and a cleanser just to make sure that we get that deep clean. And now we can be sure that it's all clean and a blank slate for us to work on. Okay, so the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to apply our under eye gel pad. So I'm gonna get you to open your eyes again for me. And when you get your gel pads, there's two, there's four total, two pairs. So you just want to slide your finger and remove the backing of the gel pads. And we're just going to secure those lashes down so that we make sure they don't get up when we're lifting the upper lashes. We wanna make sure that they are staying out of the way. This is a step that you can bypass once you get used to doing lash lifts. You don't always have to do this. Um, it does take up a little bit extra time, but it's great for when you're learning just to make sure that those lashes stay out of the way. All right, and I'll get you to close. Does that feel okay? Yes. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to select our shield size. So I'm just gonna show you the different sizes so that we can decide together. So this is our extra large shield here. And so I'm gonna place it along the lash line and I'm not gonna apply any glue yet, but I'm gonna pull up the lashes to see how far they come. And she's quite blonde, so it's hard to tell, but you can see that they come about not even really halfway up the shield. So that's gonna be too large of a shield to use. So we're gonna bump it down a size. So this is our medium two shield. And again, we're gonna just apply it onto the lash line and pull those lashes up. Still only coming about halfway up the shield. So we're gonna bump it down again. You want it to be about two thirds of the way up. 
the shield. So I'm gonna go for our medium shield. And you can see her lashes come to about there. So it's about two thirds of the way up the lash. So that's perfect. So we're gonna use our medium shield today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of our lifting glue and I'm just gonna put a real light layer on the back of the shield. Just like that. And then we're just gonna let it air dry for about 10 seconds or so. Just allow it to get a little bit tacky. And then we're going to apply it on the top right along the lash shield, or sorry, the lash line, right along there. So I'm just gonna take my lifting tool and I'm just gonna make sure that all those little lashes are popped out from underneath. Nothing's gotten stuck underneath there. Does that feel okay? Yep. All right. And then we're gonna apply the other eye. So same thing, we're gonna do a little bit of the glue on the back of the shield. I'm gonna let it air dry for about 10 seconds. And then we're just gonna apply it right along that lash line. So you wanna make sure that when you're applying the shield, you're not applying it downward and you're not applying it upward. You're applying it right along right parallel to the lash line there. And again, we're just gonna poke out the little lashes, make sure that nothing's stuck underneath there. And then I just like to gently hold them down for a few seconds just to make sure that the glue is tacky and holding it down into place. Okay, so now that we have our shields in place, we're gonna start lifting the lashes up onto the shield. So we're gonna use our Y-comb, our lifting tool, and our glue. So I like to hold all of them at once. Um, it does get, take some getting used to, um, but the more you do it, the more practice you have, the easier it'll be. So I just apply a thin layer of the glue onto the shield. And then I take my lifting tool and I start pulling the lashes up onto the shield here. So you can see they start to stick. If you're finding that the lashes are not sticking right away, it means their lashes are probably really strong. So you wanna keep that in mind when we start looking at our processing time. We'll talk more about that after. And I'm just gonna gently separate and pull the lashes up and then I'm going to go in while the glue is still tacky and use my Y comb and I find this just helps separate everything really nice and evenly and you'll notice a couple hairs pop back off what I like to do is I take a little bit of glue onto the top part of my shield here like this I dip my lifting tool in it a little bit and then I go back over because we don't want to get any cross contamination into our bottle. So we're just making sure that they're all nice and separate. And then I'm gonna to move to my next section. So again, I'm not touching the lashes, just the shield. And we're just gonna apply a light layer of the glue. You wanna make sure you're not applying too much glue because again, we don't want it to be a barrier between the lashes and the lotion but just enough, you'll get used to it. And then you just pull them up. Again, you can see that there's some that aren't sticking there. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue to the lid or the shield, use my lifting tool. And just gently go over. I'm gonna use my Y comb now. And as you can see, she's got 
had a lash from underneath stuck up in there. So you can see right along the lash shield or the lash line there. So I'm just going to gently pop out while the glue is still not set those bottom lashes. And continue. So this is the part that's going to take you the longest to get your timing down. Um, the more you practice it, the faster it'll be, and the more you'll get to that 30 minute lash lift and tint. So just making sure that they're all separate. If, there, if there's any crisscross lashes in there, when we apply the lotion, they're going to stay crisscross. So we want to make sure that they're all evenly separated and that they're all coming straight up the shield. We don't want them to be fanned out. We want it to come straight up. So if you get back to a section and it's all hard and it's all been done or uh, dried, you can just add a little bit more glue to it and it'll kind of make it more pliable again. So then you can go back over it and work with it. Usually what I do at the very end is I take a little bit of glue and I make sure my corners at the end are just perfect and lifted right up. Again, we don't want them to be fanned out. We want them to be lifted straight up. And then we also want to make sure we got no bottom lashes stuck in there. So at this point, I like to remove the bottom gel pad just because I find it, we don't want it to slide and get into the client's eye, but I do want to keep it because I am going to use it when we start doing our tinting. So I'm going to move to the other eye. And same process, just going to lift the lashes up onto the shield. and making sure that there's no crisscross lashes, that we're not using too much glue, that it's getting really goopy and hard to work with, but enough that it's gonna make the lashes stick to the shield. And making sure that we're not getting any cross contamination with the products. So it's hard to see because her lashes are so blonde, but they were quite fanned out there. So I'm just going to pull them so that they're directly coming up. And then I'm going to take my Y comb. So again, take your time at this stage. There's no rush. When you first start offering the service, make sure that you're allowing yourself enough time that you don't feel rushed. There's no processing time happening right now, so you can relax and just take your time. Make sure that they're all in place before we put our lotions on. So I'm making sure none of the bottom lashes are stuck, pulling those down. And then once I'm happy with it, I'm going to just remove the bottom shield or the bottom iPad. And I'm just going to go over one last time and just double check, make sure all those hairs are lifted. If you have any tiny little hairs poking out at the bottom, like little baby hairs, I like to kind of just leave those because we don't really want to process those because um, they're brand new hairs and they're still growing in. 
and they're not really going to affect the lift too much. So I like to kind of leave the baby hairs, make sure that the, um, they don't get over processed or damaged. We really want to make sure that we're keeping our client's lash health in mind when we're doing our lash lifts. We don't recommend doing them uh, less than eight weeks apart. So if their lash lift is lasting six to eight weeks, they will probably be left for a week or so um, kind of with regular lashes not lifted, but I don't want to go back in there uh, because it's going to damage their lashes over time and it's going to over process. So we want to allow for that eight week healing time in between. All right. So I think we have them all in place now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our number one lotion and you want to do about one pump per eye. So I'm just going to take my dampen dish and I'm just going to do one, two pumps. You might not even need that much. I would start with one pump and then get another pump if you need it. And then we're just going to put a little bit of product onto our silicone brush and we're just going to apply it not even halfway up the shield. So we want to kind of apply it right along that curved line there where the shield is going to curl those lashes. We don't want to get them on the tips of the lashes because we don't want to over process. So what I like to do is I get my timer and you can use your phone timer or you can have this 20 year old timer that I have. Um, and I'm just going to make sure that the time is set. So I'm going to set hers at six minutes. Our average for the first lotion is six minutes. When you're lifting those lashes up onto the shield and you find that they are being really stubborn and you're trying to get them up there, it means their lashes are really strong and healthy. You might want to bump it up to seven minutes. If you go to lift your lashes and they are, first of all, you're using the smallest rod and you find that they lift super easily and they're very sparse. Uh, at first you want to assess, can they even have a lash lift? And if you go ahead and do the lash lift, you want to probably bump the processing time down to five minutes, but the average is about six minutes. And I would say she's got about average lashes. So I'm going to go ahead with the six minute time. So I've got my timer all set. I haven't pressed start yet. I'm going to get some product onto my silicone brush. And I'm just going to start from the inner side and I'm just gonna dab it along around that halfway mark up her lashes, being careful not to touch the ends. And then I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit right along that lash line. We wanna make sure we're not touching the skin, but we wanna kinda get it close because we're, we're basically restructuring the hair where we want it to curl. So think, keep that in mind. Where you want to see the lift and the curl is where you want the lotion. So you don't need that curl right at the end of the lash hairs. And we don't want to over process the lash hairs. So we're going to throw that on. Once we have our first one on, I'm going to set my timer. So it's going for six minutes and then I'm going to apply it to the other eye. And you always want to remove the lotion in the same order as you applied it. So I'm going to remove this eye first and then remove the lotion from this eye. Okay. So as you can see, I barely used any of my lotion. So I probably could have gotten away with one pump. So we're gonna wait and let that process. And while we're doing that, we're going to mix up our number two setting lotion and our PBD free tint. So this is the step that's gonna save you in all of that time. Um, instead of doing our setting lotion, removing it, and then putting on our tint, we're doing it all at once. So I'm going to take two pumps of my setting lotion and then add equal parts to my PBD free tint. So 
So there's the PVD free tint. And then I'm going to add two pumps equal parts my setting lotion. I'm going to mix those up together while we're still sitting because I want it to kind of start the processing on the tint and get it activated. So I'm going to mix it really evenly. And then my little trick that I like to do is I just add two drops of hydrogen peroxide just to get that tint to the stage we want it to be. Actually one drop if it's a bigger drop and mix it all up. And then I'm just going to let that sit there until we're ready to use it. All right, so our six minutes is up. So I'm going to remove the number one lotion and I'm just going to use my silicone brush and I'm just going to gently pull the excess in an upward motion, the excess lotion. I'm just being very careful not to pull it over the ends of her lashes. So we just kind of want to pull it up and out. And again, we're starting with the eye that we started with so that we make sure that they have even processing times. I'm going to take a Q-tip with a little bit of water and I'm just going to gently go over the lashes because the water is going to stop any activation because we don't want those, pro those lashes to get over processed if there's any leftover lotion. So we're just going to gently apply the water to stop any activation and we're going to move over to the other eye and again in a gentle sort of upward and out motion. So we're not pulling the lotion over top of the tips of the lashes. That's really important because that's where you're going to get your over processed curly cue look, which we do not want. So once I get all of that excess off, I'm going to take a damp, damp Q-tip. You don't want it to be too wet because we don't want to start lifting that glue yet, but just enough to dampen that lo any excess lotion to stop any activation. All right, so now we're ready for our tint and set uh, step. So I'm going to take my tint and my step two setting lotion and I'm going to apply it to the entire lash now. So right from the base and you want to pull and have it go over the entire lash. So the key with this is we don't want it to be overly thick that it doesn't process underneath because the tint needs to process. So we're just going to evenly apply it over the lashes and allow that air to sort of oxidize the tint. So it's just a really thin, even layer. So we're going to set our timer for six minutes again. And this time doesn't need to be adjusted for their, um, considering their lash sort of health. They can go with six minutes if they have weaker lashes and they can go with six minutes if they have stronger lashes. So again, just a really fine, even, there and I've got my timer set and so what I'm going to do now because we have our tint is I want to tint the bottom lashes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gel pads and gently put them underneath the bottom lashes to protect her skin I'm going to take my lifting tool and just make sure that we pop out any bottom lashes that are underneath the gel pad. And then I'm going to take my setting and tint 
lotion and I'm just going to gently brush the tips of the bottom lashes just to get a little bit of that tint on there. All right, so we've got the tint evenly applied along the bottom lashes. So now we're gonna sit and we're gonna wait our remaining processing time. And at this stage, I like to just sort of tidy up my station. Um, for any tools that I'm not using anymore, I like to spray them with alcohol um, and put them back in my drawers so that I'm ready for my next client. Um, they're nice and clean and I can just pull them out and I'm not wasting time in between clients cleaning my station. I like to spray it with 70% alcohol and all of our tools can be sprayed with it. Okay, so our six minutes is up and I'm just going to remove all the excess lotions in an upward motion with my silicone brush. So because we're using a PBD free tint, you're gonna get more of a natural black. You're not gonna get that blue black, jet black look with our PBD free tint, but it's gonna look really natural and really pretty and soft. So I'm just gonna brush in a downward motion now on the bottom lashes just to get off that excess. And I'm just gonna remove the gel pads. And this time I'm gonna put a little bit more water on my Q-tip because we wanna start lifting the glue. So I'm gonna put the water over top of the lashes it's going to stop any activation and it's also going to start dissolving the glue. So while that sits on there, we're going to go to the other eye. And just in a gentle upward motion, and this one again, you're allowed to pull it over the tips of the lashes. And then just downward on the bottom lashes. So taking a wet Q-tip, we're just gonna apply it over the lashes to stop any activation and to start lifting the glue off of the shields. So not too much that you're gonna drop water into their eye, but just enough to sit on the shield and start dissolving that glue. So now I'm gonna go back over to our first eye and still in an upward motion, just take a damp Q-tip and just wipe away any of that glue that's dissolving and you'll start seeing them lift off the shield a little bit. If you gently press back, you'll start noticing them pop off. If you don't, don't rub at them. Just keep going in an upward motion with the water and eventually they'll pop off. So as you can see, it's really easy lifting. It's not too hard to get that glue to come off of the lashes and the shield. And you just wanna make sure that all the lashes are removed before we remove our shield because we don't wanna pull at any of her lashes. So again, I'm just gonna go over it one more time, upward motion. Make sure all that glue is off. And then what I like to do is take my wet Q-tip underneath the shield and just roll it towards the inner part of her eye. 
and it just pops the shield off really nicely. And then I'm just going to gently brush those lashes up in an upward motion. And then we're going to move to the next eye. So wet Q-tip. And gently in an upward motion, removing any of that glue, excess tint. And then just kind of gently pushing back and if they pop off easy, you're good to go. If not, pull in the upward motion a little bit longer. But as you can see, they all pop off really easily. And then I'm just gonna remove my shield by twisting my wet Q-tip through the shield and the eyelid in between. And then I'll give it a gentle brush. So the extra step that we like to do is a lash bath. And this is just going to ensure that all the glue is off the skin, off the lashes, all the excess lotions, so that before she opens her eyes, we can see that they're all nice and clear for her. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Kleenex and I'm just going to fold it into eights. And then I'm going to take my bowl of water and I'm just going to push the Kleenex up against the bowl of water. I'm going to ask my model to turn her head to the side so that when we drop the water on her lash, it'll drop right back into the bowl. And then our Kleenex is going to catch any excess water. So I'm just going to put that against the bowl and her skin at the bottom of her lashes. And I've got some cool water here. You don't want to use hot water because we don't want to reverse what we've done. We don't want to relax the perm. So I'm just going to take some cool water. I'm going to take my cotton round, make sure it's nice and drippy wet like this. And I'm going to put it at the top of her lash and squeeze. And that will allow the water to drip down through the lash line and remove any excess products that we don't want left on the skin. So I'm just going to do that a few times. And then I'm just going to take my Kleenex, give her a little dab. And then right away, I'd like to take my spoolie and brush them back right back up into place. And then we're going to do the same on the other eye. straight again perfect and then so we're just going to make sure that they're all brushed into place we're gonna get our step number three our nourishing lotion and what I like to do is I like to just do a couple of pumps on the back of my hand and I just take my spoolie and just gently grab a little bit of that product and apply it evenly throughout my spoolie So I'm going to apply it to her lashes, just like you would like mascara. And it's just going to make them look kind of wet and dewy. But we want that to kind of set and harden so that A, it keeps the lashes in place for the next little while so that they're not being crisscrossed or they're, the client, if they sleep on it, it can get uh, kind of crimped. Um, so we want them to kind of stay in place for the next two to three days. So this will help with that as well as it'll help rehydrate the eyelashes um, and help nourish them. So we want to apply a little bit to both sides. Okay. 
If you find that you're applying it and the lashes are just sticking together, um, you might be applying a bit too much nourishing lotion or it might not be applied very evenly. So we just wanna make sure that they're nice and separate. And this is the part that takes me longer than it should because I love just playing with them. It's all those Instagram videos where you watch people play with lashes. Okay, so I'm gonna take one last Q-tip with a little bit of water, a clean one, and I'm just gonna rub it underneath her lash line, underneath her lashes, just to make sure everything's cleaned up. And then I'm gonna ask my client to open her eyes. How do they feel? Good. They feel good? Do they feel yeah. stuck anywhere? No. No? Okay, and you just wanna make sure that none of those bottom lashes are stuck. And then at this point, you just wanna advise your client on their aftercare. No really hot water or steam for 24 hours. And you wanna make sure that for the next two to three days that they're really keeping in mind the placement of the lashes. Like I said before, if they go home and they sleep on their side and it crimps, they're gonna kinda of have that for the next six weeks. So after about three days, they're really set and they will stay where they stay. They can sleep on them or put on mascara and all that kind of stuff. But up until then, they wanna really make sure that they're in place uh, and set. So thank you for watching our video on our 30 minute lash lift and tint. I can't wait to see your beautiful results. You can tag us on Instagram, or if you have any questions, you can email us at hello at bpampered.ca.